How are you? Yeah, not bad, thank you. Doing all right. How long have you been doing music? Uh, I had some Casio hand keyboards and a sort of children's guitar in my early teens. I didn't really start writing songs and, and doing demos and things like that for record companies till my early 20s, so um, quite late, I suppose, compared to some artists. Nice studio you have now. What did you start out with? After hearing Blue Monday, I really, really wanted to get uh, myself a drum machine and a synthesizer. I used to earn about £32 a week. I gave my mum a tenner for keep and I used to save £10 a week for a sim, so the rest went on clothes and records and drinks and you know, things like that. And 30 weeks later I bought myself a Casio CZ101. It, it could only play four notes at a time, but I was actually made up with it, it was brilliant. And in 1985 the Spectrum came out and so then I had the synth and the drum machine at last. And then I found out the Atari ST um, had its own built-in MIDI, so that's when I started getting a lot of depth, you know. The Roland TR505 came out in 86, I remember having one of those. There wasn't really until I bought a Tascam Porter Studio, the 488, I could really start probably recording songs and building up tracks properly. Before that I just used to sing and play guitar in straight and with, along with the sequence and drum machine onto a cassette tape, you know, just in one take. So it wasn't very good. What songs and artists inspired you over the years? Yeah, Blue Monday by New Order was like life-changing for me. I mean, I always loved music before that. But since that song came out, I, it really made me want to get into music. I was about 17 at the time when that came out. That, that amazing drum beat and the sequence bass line, you know, sequence bass line. It's just brilliant. Um, other tracks that heavily influenced me, I think like it's Hysteria by Muse, it's an amazing bass line and lead guitar, you know, such a fantastic song that is. Um, In and Out of Love by Armin Van Buren, such, such a beautiful trance song. Um, there's, there's three albums that stayed out for me in the 80s as well. Computer World by Kraftwerk, which was 1981 that came out. Movement by New Order, that was also in 1981, and The Hurting by Tears for Fears in 1983. And those three albums, I mean, it's got some brilliant songs on them, really great songs. I still listen to them now. What do you hate about the music industry? Uh, it's a phenomenal pressure, especially when you're young, to be popular. Someone once told me to change my style of music, actually. How arrogant is that? And how ignorant as well. To think you can just change your style of music and suddenly everyone will love you, you know, and put you on the radio and that is just so ridiculous. And people just enjoy what they enjoy themselves, you know? I mean, if everyone had the same taste in music as me, New Order would be the best-selling band ever. And the Beatles would never have sold a single song or had a single stream or whatever, you know? I've got nothing against the Beatles. It's just, you know, it's not my cup of tea. It's not the sort of music I like, you know. But people just enjoy what they enjoy, right? You know? it, it, like, change your style of music. You, know? you just get sick of music and give up, you know. And there really is no one style of music that can make people like you, you know, that attitude. That, you know, if you're not number one, if you're not outdoing other people and that sort of thing, that you're not enough, you know. I mean, that's why there's so many problems in the world. I mean, it's quite pathetic, really. Also, there are some really nasty people who can take advantage of you in the music industry as well. Especially when you're young and naive sort of thing, you know. I remember one record label, it, it said they loved my music, you know, one of my songs, and it was ideal for their upcoming CD compilation that they were going to release. But I'd have to pay for the recording in the studio and some of the expenses towards the release. But, I, you know, I didn't think for a minute that it was a scam or anything. But there's no like internet back then or YouTube, so you know, there's lots of videos now about how you know scams even on major artists um, work, you know, and how they get ripped off. But I mean, then I was so thrilled at the prospect of being on the CD, I went ahead with it, you know, had my day in the studio, get waiting and waiting for a release date, you know, contacting them, waiting, waiting all the time. Uh, until finally, in the end, they said the CD's been cancelled. Yeah, I mean, 
there was never any CD, you know, but I, I was just devastated, you know. I think now that it was just a way of like getting artists to pay for studio time. I never got any of the studio time money refunded, you know, I only got half of the other expenses back. And what do you love about it? Uh, yeah, be, like being on ITV was absolutely fantastic. Like watching myself on TV, that was just, just wonderful, you know. And, and music, music is much so, so much more accessible now with the internet and that. When I was young, it was literally what you had on the radio or the TV. You had a very narrow sort of choice to listen to, you know. But now you can find just so many talented bands and artists on on the internet, you know. Brilliant songs from all around the world, you know. It's, it's fantastic, so um, that side of it I love now, and the technology is so much better now as well. I really do like, you know, it's not just for the super rich anymore. You can, you know, buy some really powerful equipment, much cheaper now than ever you could when I was young, you know. And from an artist's perspective as well, being able to reach people all over the world without, you know, being needing to sign to a label. It's brilliant, you know, it's much easier now to get your music out there. What about the future? Um, my new State Tronic album, Latitude, is called, it's out next month. I'm really pleased with it. It's uh, one pack track in particular, Lost in Your Deception. It's always already been described as awesome, banging, mind-blowing and sick, which is what young people say when they like to say sick, it means they love that song. Sort of thing. You know. That's young people today for you. Um, I've got some new Left of Scorpio tracks out in the pipeline as well. And um, recently I really, really enjoyed Peter Hook's Joy Division Orchestrated. Such a powerful interpretation of some classic songs, you know. It was amazing. And um, I know there's like some orchestral versions of trance songs as well. And uh, it gave me the idea to do some like orchestral versions of some of my songs. That's something I'll start working on in the new year as well.